Welcome to video clip 6.6 .6, in which we analyze decision tables. I think so far it is clear that decision tables are very important assets for organization. The quality should be as high as possible and this is why we in investigate analysis techniques to improve the quality of decision tables. We look at two aspects when we analyze decision table. First of all, the completeness and then the consistency of decision tables. Completeness refers to the question, are all possible input combinations actually covered by the decision table? Or are there input combinations that are not covered, which would uh, be a problem for a decision table, of course. In the second um, analysis question, we look at the consistency. The question is here, is the decision table actually in line with its hit policy? So let's start with looking at the completeness of decision tables. More concrete, what does completeness mean? Well, it means for all combinations of input values, is there a rule that covers it? We'll investigate the completeness property um, for the following example of a health risk level decision. We have here two input um, columns, two inputs, that is again the age and the medical history. And we also have the domain of the age and the medical history and the domain of the age is natural numbers from one through 100 and the medical history has just the values good and bad. And now we have to check if all combinations of the Cartesian product of age times medical history are actually covered. So, and the uh, Cartesian products of two sets is the set of pairs where the first element of the pair uh, is an element of the first uh, set here, so of age, and the second element of that pair is an element of the medical history set. So let's investigate the property for this example. Um, we can look here at first at the age, so all input values where the age is smaller than 20 are covered because I have here input for uh, both values of the medical history namely good and bad. As it turns out, when we investigate the completeness, we are not looking in, at the output level, so we are just looking at the input. We are only interested uh, whether all input combinations are actually covered. Okay, so for all ages from one through 19, we have made sure that, um, that the completeness is satisfied. Um, rule three says here that for all ages between 20 and 65 included, um, regardless of the medical history, something is defined. So we can also say, well, um, between 20 and 65, we have the completeness there. Um, and then for all uh, persons with age um, exceeding 65, we also have good and bad. And therefore we can conclude that really all elements of this Cartesian product are covered. And it cannot be the case that I, um, I start or I st try to evaluate the decision with an input combination that is not present in the decision table. So we can conclude here that the decision is complete because, because all combinations are actually covered. So in the second example, uh, we have the same mm, the same example, but a slightly different decision table here. We also need to make sure that all combinations of the Cartesian product age times medical history are actually covered. And we, um, well, we can take a look here. Let's start with rule five. So regardless of the age, um, the medical history for, or for input with medical history equals bad, all ages are covered. So. Uh, for the bad part, we, we are on the, on the uh, correct side, so to speak. Looking here at the good part, we have two rows looking at uh, medical history equals good. And here we have uh, two properties. The first says, well, for the age smaller than 20. And the second one says for the age larger than 20. If, we, if you closely look at this, um, probably you've seen that there is one input combination that is not covered by this decision table. And this is where the age is 20 and the medical history is good. 
that's the only input combination that is not covered here and therefore this table is not complete. So the decision table is not complete since the case age equals 20 and medical history equals good is not covered. To summarize completeness, um, I like to say that the incomplete decision tables are really a problem. When a process with uncovered value is executed, the decision simply cannot be taken. Um, completeness makes sure, on the other hand, that the decision can always be taken. So your decision tables should be complete. Let me remark that even though completeness is no longer covered in the new DMN standard, it is a very good practice to check for completeness in order to avoid um, the situations that I have been talking about before. And also on the good side is that tools like the um, Signavio system provide automatic uh, completeness checking and will, um, will point you to any problems regarding completeness in your decision table. So we now look at consistency of decision table, tables. First, the single hit um, properties are analyzed and actually, as we see a bit later, only the single hit properties can be analyzed. So which type of analysis do we look at here? Um, let's exemplify this using the unique property. The unique property is violated, well, if there is one input combination that matches several rows. So it's sufficient if it matches two rows, then the unique property is no longer valid for a given table. So if we take a look at the, um, at the table below, we first have the unique um, single hit uh, policy here. And if you take a close look at this, we'll see that all input combinations are um, covered and are covered by at most one row. Therefore, we can say that the unique property is satisfied by this table. Now we have a slight change to this table. The change is indicated by these um, green, um, uh, well, um, green symbol. And uh, so we now, the rule five has been changed, though so it's not only larger than 65, but larger or equal 65. And what happens here is that the unique property is actually violated. Why? Because there is an input combination for which two rules match, namely rules 3 and 5. So we have rules 3 and 5. And that's forbidden. Unique uh, states that there must be at most one, uh, one row for each input combination. Here is an input combination 65 bad, which matches um, rules 3 and, or 3 and 5. So how about the any property in that example? Use the very same example to investigate the any property. The any property is violated if a given input combination matches two rows with different outputs. Yeah, if two rows have the same output, I can use any, so it's not, uh, not violated. But it's only violated if a given input combination uh, matches two rows with different outputs. Okay, so let's look at this example again. And again, um, for 65 bad, we have to check. And we see that um, 65 bad matches here and there. And we see, yes, actually, um, the any property is violated since there are different outputs uh, for these matching rules. So rule three matches medium, rule five matches high. And so you cannot use any of them because they have different output values. So the any property is violated for 65 bad. How about the priority property? Can they, can they be violated in the first place? So again, we have the same, um, the same input. So we have rules um, three and five matched. So rule three is matched and rule five is matched for 65 bad. And we have output medium and high. 
But then in the priority, as we discussed earlier, we just look at the output priority. And then the output priority makes sure that the medium is before um, in the priority before the high. So here we just have the output medium. And therefore, there's no violation. Now, this is allowed. This is perfectly normal behavior of the uh, priority um, uh, single hit policy. So actually, we cannot uh, uh, check consistency with the priority uh, hit policy, since even if several rows match, like we've seen in this example, a single one will be chosen deterministically using the output priorities. Let's continue the example and change it a little bit. So now we change the rule four. The rule four is now changed, and so we allow um, equal 65, it's now greater or equal 65. Um, and now we can check, is the any property now violated? So now we have, um, if we look at 65 good, we have two rows that match 65 good. Okay, so, um, and if we look at the return values of 65 good, we have here medium and we have here medium as well. So yes, there are different rows that match um, this um, input combination, 65 good, but all of them have the same output and then it's no violation because any allows this. This brings us to the end of video clip 6.6 .6, in which we analyzed decision tables. First of all, we looked at completeness of decision tables and we argued that it's important that your decision tables are complete to avoid situations where, where decisions can simply not be taken. The second property or class of property that we analyzed is consistency of decision tables. There we argued that we can check consistency for unique and any single hit properties, but we cannot do so for priority and first because they are more flexible and we cannot check the consistency criteria here.